What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking springtime lipless crankbaits. Why you need to be throwing them. I got a bunch of different baits that shine in different conditions. Let's jump in. Lipless crankbaits and springtime fishing go hand in hand. You know, some of my best days ever have been in the springtime on a lipless crankbait. This time of the year, a lipless crankbait is a very, one of my favorite baits for searching vast areas and finding those large school of, schools of fish that are moving up into the shallows. So today I got a handful of different baits for different conditions. We're gonna talk about when and why to use each we're gonna talk about gear, rods, reels, line, all that stuff, because it's very important. There's a lot to learn for lipless cranks. Got some, some beginner baits, some advanced baits, we'll talk about colors, but a lipless crankbait pretty much can be fished two ways. The two ways that I fish a lipless crankbait, one, cast it out and just reel. Burn it as fast as you can, put some pauses in there and get those fish to react. The next way, my personal favorite way to fish a lipless crank is gonna be fishing it like a jig. Fire it out there, let it fall, just real small rod tip movement. Just real small lifts and drops, just like you're stroking a jig, and let that lipless vibrate two or three times and fall back down, and you will get some of the hardest jig bites you've ever had. So as far as lipless crankbaits, hands down, my favorite, Matt and I, we've preached on this bait for several years, is the LV500. What makes this bait so special to us is the fall. It's a three quarter ounce bait, but not all three quarter ounce baits are created equal. This bait falls very quickly. So when you're doing that hopping technique, just working that bait towards you, nine times out of 10, when that bait hits the ground, hits the bottom, boom, you get that monster jig bite. So an LV is a perfect bait to find fish and slow fish and really get those fish to commit. It's got a real uh, distinct sound. You know, some of these other baits I'll show you have different rattles in, in them, you know, uh, tungsten or, or um, you know, one, one knockers, stuff like that. So you can switch it up because a lot of guys, especially out here on the West Coast, a lot of guys are now throwing the LV500. It's been a staple in tournaments out here for several years. So switching it up, getting different sounds, those types of things will help you on your fisheries. We'll cover that in a little bit. Again, the LV500, it's a staple in our fish in, in our fishing. You know, we've traveled the country and everywhere we've went, that bait works. Next bait that I wanna talk about is this guy right, right here. This is the Jackal TN70. Same style. You know, I talked about how to fish these. I talked about the, the hopping technique and I talked about the burning technique. So this, bait right here, the TN70, fits in that hopping category. I have some other baits later I'll talk about the burning, the cast and retrieve baits, but this right here, again, Jackal TN70, is another hopping bait. It's that same similar profile, comes in two different sounds. It's got rattles, and this is actually the disc knocker. It's got that real loud kind of single knock, one knock sound to it. Again, this time of the year, you're gonna have to play around with the fish on your fishery. I really like the LV500 with those with those small BBs in there. But if you're fishing around a bunch of other guys throwing lipless crankbaits, try to be different. Switch it up, try it out. I mean, there's been days on the water that Matt and I have been fishing, or Matt and Cece have been fishing, where the, the one knocker or this TN70 works way better than the LV500. So that is why we're gonna give you options for you guys to try out on your fisheries. So again, that Jackal TN70 is another must have for the hopping style of lipless cranks. Now the last bait that I wanna talk about in that category is gonna be this guy right here. This is actually the Six Cents Quake 70. Again, more of that rattle sound, a little bit different profile. It still is the same similar size as the LV and the Jackal but it's got a little bit different top on it. You know, when you look at these two baits, you compare like the, the LV versus the Quake, little different vibration, but again, another great bait for 
bottom hopping. When you fire this thing out, let it hit bottom and just lift that rod tip just enough to get those baits fluttering and drop back down. But the Quake 70, especially in the Midwest, I know Matt, when he went on his, his trip this last year, this was his go-to lipless crank. And uh, again, that's why we're giving you different options because different fisheries are gonna react to different baits better. So look at the Quake 70 and uh, I think you'll really like it. So those, are the hopping style of baits. Now let's talk about springtime and burning this bait over uh, shallow vegetation. You know, these fish are moving up into the shadow, shallows, you know, one to eight or 10 feet, right? So when you fire this thing up super shallow, you can burn this bait. It's not as heavy, it's not as cumbersome, it doesn't fall as quickly, and you can get this right over the grass, the vegetation. This is actually the Strike King Red Eye Shad. Now this bait in particular comes in two sizes and two different sounds. This is the half ounce, that is the three quarter ounce. Normal rattles, one knocker. This is actually the two tap. Again, two different sounds to be different. But what I like about the red eye shad is you can fish it shallower. You know, the LV or the Jackal, again, you can fish it shallow, but it's, got, it's gonna fall quicker and it's gonna get hung up in that vegetation more if you're fishing it slow. If you're burning it, no issues, but this guy falls slower and it comes through the vegetation, the tops of the vegetation, a lot better. That is the Red Eye Shad. The other one I wanna to talk to you guys about, this is the Cotton Cordell Super Spot. Probably one of the least expensive lipless cranks on the market. I mean, you can find them in, in clearance bins, you can find them in budget bins, um, but uh, you definitely get your money's worth with this bait right here. In fact, I think Matt was telling me, he was joking that when we went to South America recently, this was the first bait that he tied on and caught, I believe a piranha on. Very durable bait, has that same kind of rattle sound that the, the hopping baits have. But again, it's very light. This is a half ounce bait versus, you know, a three quarter ounce bait. Same profile, just falls completely different. It's more of that shallow fishing, burning it over grass flats. Again, springtime, you gotta find these fish. So when you're fan casting and just burning this over, the vegetation, it's gonna show you, it's gonna cover a lot more water, and you're gonna find where those fish are sitting a lot better than slow fishing. The last thing that I wanna talk about these baits before I talk about rods and line selection is your components. You know, make sure you upgrade your hooks on these lipless cranks. Matt and I, we use either the Gamakatsu, the EWGs, or the owner ST56s, the 3X. Out here on Clear Lake, you know, we get those big fish. We don't want any, any big ones coming off and you know, bending the hook. So if they are eating the bait, that is typically when you will go with an EW, EWG style hook, kind of a tipped in point. They're eating the bait, they hold on a lot better than like a round bend. A round bend is more if they're slashing at the bait or if you're burning the bait and they're just coming up and swiping at it, that is when I will go with the, the uh, ST56. But down below in the video description, I will link everything I'm talking about, hooks, colors, baits, all that good stuff. Colors, I'm glad I said that. You know, in the springtime, I think, you know, we've talked about it in, in previous videos, but it's really hard to beat a red or a craw pattern. You know, this is a spring craw, spring craw color of an LV500. Some of the best days we've had fishing shallow is actually burning this in shallow water as fast as we can turn the handle. You know, typically when I'm throwing like a ghost minnow or some kind of natural color, that is when I'm fishing it slow. But in the springtime, when those fish get up shallow, I know we've talked about it with square bills and, and other videos, but if you can go with a red color or something iridescent red and burn it as fast as you can, it can be lights out and you might have some of the best fishing you've ever had in the springtime. So keep it fairly simple. Uh, typically I will have some kind of a ghost minnow color. That is what I'm going to throw in my clear water. And then I'm going to have something with some flash to it. Maybe like an American shad or something with some scale pattern. I will throw that on your slick, calm, sunny days, give some extra flash. And then on those cloudy, um, kind of just darker days, I will go with something like a chartreuse shad, something with a white base, 
some chartreuse to it. That's typically what I have. So a ghost color, some kind of a, a shad bait fish color, a craw color, and then uh, a, something with a white base like a chartreuse shad color. Last but not least, let's cover gear because you know we've played around for years with different lipless crankbait rod selections. And hands down, our favorite is gonna be this guy right here. This is a Loomis, it's an 845 CBR. It's a, it's a crankbait rod, so it's a real light, slow action in the tip, and it loads fairly deep into the rod. So when you're, when you're hopping that bait, or you hook that fish, it's gonna flex all the way down here to the handle section and stay loaded. So when those big fish come up, those big small mouth spots, big large mouth, they come up and they tail walk, that rod stays loaded and you don't lose fish on these little hooks. So the 845, it's available in different models. I mean, different price points. This is actually the E6X, came, comes in the 845 as well. So we'll link those down in the video description. But that 845, that action has been perfect for us. You know, a little bit shorter rod and uh, that, that parabolic bend in that rod blank is really what helps keep those big fish penned. As far as a reel, typically a seven or an eight to one reel is gonna be what you need. When you're firing out and you're burning, you know, that burner reel is covering so much more water. You're covering so much more water to find those fish. And it's just easier throughout the day to have less of those handle turns. So a seven or eight to one is a must. Even if you're firing out and you're just hopping bottom, once you find that school of fish or that piece of structure you're fishing and you're just hopping it slowly, when they do bite, you wanna reel down to them and load up so that that burner reel picks up that line a lot quicker and you get that rod loaded into that fish a lot quicker. Now, the only other thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is gonna be fluorocarbon or braid. It's totally up to you, but for me, if I am firing out and I am bottom fishing an LV or a lipless, any of these lipless, if I'm bottom fishing and I'm hopping it, you're gonna have so much more sensitivity with braid to leader, leader either braid to, uh, to fluorocarbon or braid to mono. You can go with 12 or 15 pound test, depending on what, what you want, it's totally up to you. But you have so much more feel with that braid, so much so that there's been multiple times I'll be hopping that bait up, I can feel I just hit a fish. Fish did not eat it, but I'm a round fish. And a lot of times you fire back in there and they'll eat it on that initial fall. So fire it out there, hop it, let it fall. Braid, you're gonna have a lot more sensitivity doing that. Now fluorocarbon, if you're just firing out there and you're just burning, you're just covering water, you can get away with the fluorocarbon. It doesn't matter, you don't need that sensitivity because the, the bait's just gonna stop when they eat it. But springtime, guys, if you guys are not familiar or don't have confidence in a lipless crank, I challenge you guys to do it because it is phenomenal. No matter where we are in the country, springtime, it is a must to throw the lipless crank. You catch a lot of fish. Some of my biggest fish I've ever caught, multiple double digits have been on a lipless crank in the springtime. So if you guys haven't tried it, definitely try it out. If you guys have tried it, expand. Try some of these other baits that I recommended. Try some of the colors that I recommend down below in the video description. And I think you guys will have a lot more success with fishing a lipless crank. Try the two different techniques, the hop technique and the burn technique. Let your fish tell you what they want and you guys will get them. As always guys, we appreciate you. If you guys learned something from this video or, or uh, like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, turn on notifications, that way you know when we're putting out videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes a fourth. We appreciate you guys. Have a good one.